Hey everybody, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete, and I'm introducing this today because we're at my urban farm. Yeah, love it. And who are you? I'm Greg Peterson from The Urban Farm. And our first series was at The Urban Farm. Yeah. And now we're here at my place, yeah. Longevity Gardens. Yeah, next time we'll be at my place. And I wanted to take you through my yard today and give you about- and eat some things. Four or five things that Fantastic. are ripening right now nice. in middle of November. Middle of, middle of November. Yes. That's amazing. Which I find, for me personally, uh -huh. it's my favorite time of year to grow food in uh -huh. my home in Phoenix because all of the winter veggies yeah. and all of yeah. um, my, you know, my winter greens and herbs grow very well in the winter. Absolutely. Let's go to the first item. Let's go eat, man. Watch your head. So Greg, we're going into what I call my tropical section. Yeah, nice because tropical this, section. Thank you. This part of my yard is a lot of uh, subtropical plants mm -hmm. that do work in Phoenix. Yep. Like guava, royal poinciana, we got some date, we got some papaya, some avocado and stuff like this. And a couple of things make this the tropical section. Mm -hmm. Number one, all of these tropical plants are planted on my pond. Oh yes. Which you can see my fish down there. Yep. And that increases the moisture and the warmth in the winter and the cool, cool in the, in the summer, summer of yeah. this corner. Plus the amount of uh, biodiversity I have here is amazing. And it also helps the existence of these tropicals. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna show you guys these guys today. This is my papaya tree that's about, I would say three years old in two months from now. Wow, coming so, up on three years. Come up on three years and he's gotten massive this year. And this year we didn't have very big monsoon in oh, terms of the wind. Right, so it didn't knock the fruit off. It didn't knock the fruit off and it didn't knock the leaves off. So this guy actually looks better this year than he's ever looked before. Wow. And you can see how he's gotten a lot of fruits up there, but I've yeah. already eaten about 20. How are we gonna get them? I got a ladder for us. All right. Now, Greg, when I first met you, you were a teacher of the class yep. on gardening. Yep. And you still teach at urbanfarm.org. I do teach at urbanfarm.org. And you talked about always having the fruit within reach. Oh, yes. So I'm yeah. sorry that this is beyond my reach. That's but okay. Papayas are weird. That's the way they grow. Yeah, exactly. They'll freeze back this winter and it knock will. it down some. It will. So I put this guy like this. I just go up there and I usually grab two at a time. Uh huh. And once I pick two off, then two more ripen about five days later. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So I've already picked off about, I would say about 15 or 20 off this plant so far. Wow. And the cool thing is, is that, guess what's really cool about this? Is that I'm not picking these guys early and then they're ripening in the store. Like these right. are ready these to eat right ready now. To fresh, yeah. They're perfectly ripe. Most nutrient dense, probably the tastiest. So this is, this is, a, this exactly. is one of those mir miracle things for me. I've never eaten something like this, right? a papaya right off the tree before. And maybe not Phoenix grown? At, oh, definitely not Phoenix grown. My friend, uh, uh, Dr. Rosenberg, he's uh -huh. part of the Arizona Rare Fruit Growers. Yep. He grows them in his little like shed <laughs> from seed. Nice. He gave it to me when it was six inches tall. Wow. It was this this, this big, uh -huh. and I planted it in the ground. Mm -hmm. And now it's like this now a couple years like later. This. Gotta love it. Yep, these are called a Thai Nung number two. We're gonna eat this one today, and then we're also gonna eat this one. Come over here. All right. This one's called a Mexican papaya. Oh my gosh. I would prefer to plant this one. I'm gonna step out of the way so that people can see it. If I wanted to give wow. advice to people in town, plant uh -huh. Mexican because they're a shorter papaya, so the monsoon oh, yeah. won't affect it as much, but yeah. the fruit is bigger. Wow, dude, that is amazing. Greg, I've been waiting to uh, pick this guy for two years. <laughs> Actually, a year and eight months. That is called patience, my man. And you just happen to be here when I think it's, I think it's ready. Love it. Let's try. So we're gonna just kind of break that off, and that's a... Wow. Compare that one to the Thai Nung. Oh my gosh, it's a, it weighs about five times as much. And it looks pretty ripe, right, do, do you think? Yeah, Maybe it's we should soft. try to taste it. Yeah. The way I've been eating these is instead of cutting them in half and spooning them out, uh -huh. I just barely shave the skin off, eat the whole thing, and mm, it's so good. Nice. You can almost eat the skin. Nice. So let's hold on to this. All right. And we'll go to the next item. All right, cool. I'm with you. Are you okay holding those papayas? Bring it, man. <laughs> these are wonderful. <laughs> You're not I may not give them back. <laughs> I better get to eat some. Yeah, okay. Okay, behind me here, I have this kind of arbor, a little archway, yeah. right? I got some grape up there, but grapes dying out. Right. It's winter time. Yeah. Um, but I also have this cucumber vine that I did not plant. This I planted this vine two years ago. Right. And somehow one of the seeds survived planted itself. I love, we call them volunteers. volunteers. I love volunteers. So all of this foliage here on the ground, up the tree, up the arbor, it's all West Indian gherkin. It's called a bird gherkin. It's a thorny cucumber. It, yeah, it's, and they're about, what, silver dollar size? Oh, there's one right there. See them all right here dangling yeah. from the top? 
they look like this. Yeah. And their defense mechanism is their spine. So they are kind of spiny, but once you eat them, put them in your mouth, the spines go away pretty quick. So I'm gonna harvest a couple that I know are pretty ripe because what I have found is that if they get over ripe, they do not taste as good. They need to be perfectly ripe to be that fresh cucumber taste. Nice. Wow, look at that. So we've got different ones in different stages of ripeness. Nice. They look kind of kind of formidable. Yeah, they do. But they're pretty well, good. Yeah. And I'll bet you're gonna have me just take a bite out of one here in a little while, aren't you? I am. Yeah. At maybe. the end. Maybe. People hang with us for like two minutes, we're yeah. gonna eat it all at the end. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's go with something super delicious. All right, super okay. delicious is good. Okay, we're in my main garden center. Right, so we got papayas, two Papaya. different kinds. Sweet gherkin. West Indian gherkin. West Indian gherkin. <laughs> Which is Cucumbers. actually pricking my hand right now. Okay, good. You wanna put them there? Yeah, hold them. Let them prick my hand. How's that feel? Good. All right, now. And good. then we have the sweet peppers. Which wow. are looking beautiful. Oh my gosh. And they're Dude, prolific. Do you realize how hard it is to grow these kind of peppers in the desert? Really? The the hot peppers do great. It's the sweet ones that are hard to grow. So my wife, who's filming this episode right now for us, yeah, the camera you. lady, she doesn't like the hot ones. She only likes the sweet ones. Yeah, I'm not a fan of hot ones. And so I've grown a bunch of different kinds. Some of them I got. Some of them I got from Suzanne Velarde, uh -huh. Velarde Gardens. Right. So these ones are look like jalapeno, but they're not. They're very sweet. And these ones are the red knight, I think, that are very sweet. Wow. In my opinion, when you can grow sweet peppers like this in your garden to where they get red and fully ripe, yes. they taste almost as sweet as exactly. a cherry. Exactly, yeah. They taste better and... And they're always more expensive in the store. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the store, like look, we have some grocery stores that are growing red peppers and uh -huh. they're always humongous. Right. But there's no taste to them. Yeah. Mine are always smaller, but loaded with taste. Nice. And I always say this, but when the food is tastier, what does that tell you about its nutrient value? It's more nutrient dense, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I put a lot of no, rock No, I know dust. so. Yeah. You can get a Brix, B-R-I-X meter. Right. Get a Brix meter and test it and that'll tell you. And usually the sweetness means. That's right. It's more nutritious. Yeah. So we're gonna go to one more item. It's a leafy green, then we're gonna eat it. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay, Greg, lastly. Uh-huh. Uh, we're here at my leafy green. This is my favorite summertime leafy green, but since it's November, right, right. It's starting to die. It's, yeah, it's going toward the end. So we got to eat it. Okay? All right. Egyptian spinach, also called the Molokia. 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 Love it. Egyptian spinach. All right. This stuff thrives in the heat of the summer, but dies out in the winter. Uh huh. And then it becomes. It recedes itself very it recedes readily. Itself. Right? Exactly. So if you take one of these seed pods that's like behind me. Yeah, good luck with that. And They're you, um, I, I don't have a hand to here, put it let in. let me see your forearm. Yeah, there we go. And if I sprinkle it on your forearm, look at the color of those seeds. Aren't those amazing? I hope the camera can see that. Yeah. Now every one of those seeds will turn into a 10 foot tall bush of spinach. <laughs> wow. But you don't want to plant it until April when it's hot. So, and here's, here's what I want to point out. Mm -hmm. First of all, there's an amazing amount of, bun of abundance in this yard. Mm -hmm. I have discovered over the past 25 years that in nature, there's this huge abundance. And the only place that this notion of lack lives is between our ears. In your brain. In our brain. Mm -hmm. Because when I look, to, I mean, look at this coming out of your yard. This is just five things though, I have more. Oh, I know, I got it. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. Let's eat. And let's show the audience which one's your favorite. Fantastic, All right. let's do it. Greg, we're ready. Fantastic. Okay. What a bounty we have here, man. It took this us, is amazing. Took us 90 seconds to pick this. Yeah. And there's lots more of this came from, this is just yeah. a sample. It's amazing. First, let's try one of the cucumbers. How about okay, that? Okay, good. So we can good. actually, Put let's just cut it in half and right. we can show the folks on the camera oh, yeah. what the inside looks like. I mean, it looks cucumber-like. It does. I'll bet it tastes cucumber-like too, given that it's a... Uh... It does. And the cool thing about this volunteer cucumber vine, it's so prolific and loaded with fruit uh -huh. that I can't possibly eat all the fruit. A good percentage of them will die and reseed itself again next year. Nice. So I'll get the free food every year as long as my water turns on once or twice a day. Yeah. So there you go. Sweet. Now, hold on. hold on. And there's spines in it. You want me to eat it with the spines? Yeah, yeah, totally. Your teeth will break the spines. All right. Don't put your tongue on the spines, but. Hmm, but that, that's a good one. Oh my God. It's fresh. That's incredible. So at the local farmer's market, mm -hmm. um, I just saw they were had a somebody who was pickling these in a jar. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. That'd be a good pickle. That'd be a good pickle. Yeah. So what do you think, thumbs up? Oh yeah, nice. West Indian burr gherkin, 
I got the seeds from rareseeds.com. Cool. The next one, let's do the peppers. Let's do the peppers. Okay. okay. So these guys look like jalapenos. They do. And it scares me. You're not going to make me eat one of those. I am. All right. And you can eat the seeds and all, but let me, let me try one first because you can see how it's all cracked there. It looks like a jalapeno. Because yeah. green there's jalapenos. A, and there's the center. Green jalapenos actually turn red when they fully ripen, just like right. anything else. But let me try what it tastes first. It's good. It's good? Go for it. You're not messing with me? No. I like spicy food, but... At first you're like, oh my god, it's gonna be spicy because your brain tricks you, but then it's not spicy. Did your brain almost tr trick you? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. Because the taste is exactly like a jalapeno. Right. But so there's, there's no a, spice. Yeah, there's, there's not, is there? Cool. Okay. How do you think the taste uh, of that is? The sweet, sweet bell type pepper. So for the audience, let's compare this pepper to this one. All right. And to be honest, I always forget the varieties, but I got them from VillardiGardens.com locally here in town. Yeah. And plant a wide variety and you'll find one you like. Yeah, Villardi, Suzanne does a great job. I love the work she does. Totally. This one's my favorite. Mm. It's good. Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. I could have let this sit another, another week on the plant. Right. And I've been researching lately that peppers are actually more nutritious than tomatoes. Nice. Plus they store better and they potentially could survive the Phoenix winter, which means right. I can get some of these to live for mm -hmm. two, three years. Oh yeah, we can do that, absolutely. So I would recommend people grow peppers over tomatoes. Yeah. Which one's your favorite? Between the peppers. Between the peppers? This one or the yeah, fake jalapeno? I, I, I think I'd go for the Me sweet, too. although it's really close. Yeah. yeah. Really close. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can, let's eat these leaves. Leafy greens. Nice. These are Literally as nutritious as kale. greens. Yep. They're succulent and tasty as spinach, uh -huh. but as nutritious as like kohlrabi or kale. Yeah. On the do they, do they taste green? Yeah. But kind of, kind of neutral. Yeah, kind of a neutral. Yeah. Probably really good in juice too. To oh, totally. Yeah. But like kale sometimes can have a sharp taste, right? Uh, this yes. one's not. It, it doesn't. Yeah. Ooh. And Ooh. they have cool, mine. <laughs> they have they have cool little tails like a bobcat ears. Oh yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? Oh my gosh, don't they? Isn't that cool? I know. Wow. And the the thing about I want people to understand who are watching our our videos here is that the you'll never find anything like this in the stores. I mean, peppers like this variety. You, all you find in the store are the biggest, biggest. ones possible that yeah. ship the best. Yeah. Which means their nutrients is low. Right. And they come from soil that's been raped. So there's no nutrients in it anymore. Right. You know, used up. The soil is used you, up. Used up. So yeah. these peppers are grown in nutrient dense compost with rock dust. This spinach is very rare. You won't find it in the store. These cucumbers nice. are rare. And so you won't find them in the store. You won't. You're bombarding your cells, you're bombarding your blood uh -huh. with this wide variety of nutrients. Mm -hmm. So good for your health. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Love it. All right. Let's try it. So I am not, I have to tell you, I'm not a great big fan of papayas. Oh, you're not? No. My wife, the same thing. Although, I'll bet these are better because, you know, I've only had store grown papayas. They're good. They're better than store grown. Oh, I'm sure. But they're still papaya. Yeah. And they're so tender. I could almost eat the skin and all. Wow, you gonna share? Yep. <laughs> so, most of the people that I like to, most people think you cut it in half. Yeah. Squeeze some lemon in there, mm -hmm. eat it out. But what I've been doing lately is I've been actually cutting the ends off like this, and I've been just shaving the skin off like you would do a kiwi or something. Oh yeah, or a mango. Or a mango. Yeah. And I found that I've wasted a lot more of it that way. <laughs> or sorry, I waste a lot less, less of, of it, it that, that way. way. Yeah. And I just uh, will eat it like it's a... Uh, when there's seeds in, there'll be black seeds inside of it. But not inside mine, Greg. Really? You wanna know why? Why? I only have female papayas. Oh. I don't have a male to pollinate it. Really? And if there's no male present, they then make seeds. they won't make seeds. Oh, wow. Which, which local farmers hate because they get paid by the pound. Oh, yes. So they want the seeds for extra weight. But this home one. gardeners... If you're not, if you don't want to save the seeds, it's actually better because there's no seeds to clean up. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I have never seen that before. Every one of them is seedless. Every single one. Wow. Wow. So that, my, this, I have one of these varieties. You do. That's one, years, one year old at the, at the house. So, and there's no, 
male to pollinate, so I'm cool. Now, if you Love were it. a farmer that had both kinds, male, female, yeah. you could put your females like in pantyhose or something and guard oh, yeah. them from the male pollen and yeah. it'd be the same thing. But, yeah. um, but this is it. And you can actually eat this uh, entire thing. There's a piece for you. Okay. Go for it. And I'm telling you, I grow this in compost and rock dust. So this is as nutritious as you're going to get. It's still papaya, but very mild. So for a guy like you who doesn't like papaya, what do you think? Mm. Finger looking good, baby. And when, and when you grow it yourself, you, ha you have to eat it. You have to eat it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, that's nice. The fact that he's going back for more means that he likes it. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's good, right? Mm -hmm. Phoenix grown. From seed. It's been in Phoenix the whole time. From seed. Wow. Mm -hmm. I like it. Let's cool. try the Mexican because yeah. for me, this is very special. Same. No seeds? I don't, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm oh, guessing. All right. You've never, right. You've I've never, never had one of this. I've only ever had this variety. Yeah. Um, I have one, two, three, four papaya trees and only one's been fruiting so far. So cool. Um, what I want to say is that I'm going to take this segment of this video and put it as its own video because I wanted to. This uh, is a spectacular moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. This is a spectacular moment here. Okay. Now, personally, I think that if the video camera wasn't present, I would let this go on my counter for one more day. But we're going to try it. Okay. okay I'm going to cut it open and see what happens. Just cut it in half? I think so. Okay. What do you... I mean, you can smell papaya in there. Oh, yeah. Usually if it smells, you're thinking it's good. Oh, yeah. Plus okay. it's soft. It gives. It is. It's, it's totally soft. Yeah. So this is tree ripened. All right. Here we go. The review. Oh, oh, there they are. That's what I was expecting. It has seeds. Oh, and look at this. See, they, some of them have sprouted inside of yeah. it. Yeah. Now you can eat those seeds. Totally. Those seeds are edible. Or I can plant that again. Or you can plant it again. I think I'm going to plant those seeds and then eat I them would. too. I would. You know, people have been um, emailing me nonstop at jakemace.com. They've also been messaging me on my Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat. Can I have the papaya leaves? Because a lot of people that are anemic are juicing papaya leaves to boost their red blood cell count. Oh, nice. Iron? I think so. I don't know. Yeah. Something about it. Dude, what are we waiting for? Okay, let's, let's eat do a little. This. We don't just let's cut just a little piece off the end. Let's try a little taste here. We're gonna cut that down like that. I'm really excited that it has seeds. Yeah, no. So kidding. that means that one of my Thai nungs pollinated this Mexico. Oh, there you go. You know, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna scrape those out. Okay. You want, you want to try one? Um, sure. <laughs> Tell the audience what one tastes like. All right. They're, they're, uh, uh, my recollection is they're a little peppery. They're peppery because um, my friend Doug with the rare fruit crush. Whoa! Like, yeah. Like was like wasabi almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very wasabi like. I can use that on my sushi. Wow! No kidding. That's like. Um, that's nice. That's like Chinese mustard. Yeah, that's nice. It is like Chinese mustard. Mm -hmm. Let's um, do it this way. We don't have a spoon, so let's just um, take a piece and you can eat it out of the skin. All right. Cheers here. Cheers. <laughs> better to me than the other one. Oh, that's <laughs> much better. That's way better. You've got to share with the camera lady. Yeah. Because if you don't, <laughs> then I get in big trouble. Here you go, no. camera lady. <laughs> nice. That's way better taste than the other one. That's way better taste than the other one. It's a stronger taste. Mm -hmm. The other one is, like you said, it's more light. Yeah. This one is really more mellow. papaya intense. Yeah. It's got flavor to it. It's got some really nice flavor to it. I'm actually pissed off that everyone's here to share it now. I wish I couldn't be here by myself. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah, this is fantastic. I either save the skin to put back into the mulch, mm -hmm. or I give it to my tortoise and he eats it. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. Okay, so what's your vote? Cucumber, Egyptian spinach, peppers, papaya? What's your favorite? The Mexican papaya. It's the best. Yeah, it is the best. And that, and it's close. It's close. Yeah. Because they're all great, but that was magical. It was much more like sweet and, and, and rich. Yeah. That's a Thai Nung right there. It's much more light yeah. and neutral. So you've eaten a lot of the Thai Nung ones this year? Over 15 this year. And yeah. then last year we had about uh, 15 total. Are they all about the same uh, taste? Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. that size and that taste is pretty consistent. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic. This is awesome. But you know, when you get a papaya from the store or mm -hmm. a peach from the store, mm -hmm. it could suck. Oh. Because it might no, not be it doesn't, ripe. No, it doesn't could. It does. It does. It does. They're like... They're like juiceless yeah. and they're tasteless, yeah. which means there's no nutrients because right. they picked them way early yeah. to ship them. So mine are tree ripened and they're fantastic. Yeah. We're going to answer some questions for the folks that have had questions yep. at urbanfarm.org. Okay. 
and on my social media. So let's get yeah. to some questions. All right, cool. So Greg, I'm loving these Farm Out Friday segments. Yeah. We're gonna end nice. each one with a question answer All right, cool. from people from that people. are yeah. either on my Instagram, my Snapchat, mm -hmm. my Facebook, nice. or my YouTube. Okay. Okay, and Fantastic. who's our first who's person our, in so question? Sharon says, do you worry about planting trees so close to the pool? Or have you done something to protect the pool? That's a good question. Yeah. I have some trees next to my pool. Yeah, you do. <laughs> do. You do. And I also have a lot of trees very close together. Yeah. So people always yeah, that was, ask. That was going to be my next question, actually, on top of hers, is do you worry about planting them too close together? Yeah, too close to a pool, too close to your house, mm -hmm. too close to a wall, right. or too close to each other. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> Well, usually what I do at the urban farm is usually the, you know, the, the kinds of things that we grow don't have invasive roots. Right. Mulberries do, ash trees do. Like on my pool, trees I have a kumquat tree right next to my pool. Exactly. Is that going to be in invasive? It's not going to be invasive. Yeah. The roots aren't going to bother anything. You know, when you put something close to a pool though, you, you know, you get leaf drop and maybe even fruit right. drop into the pool. So that's a problem to, to address. Which is why I put my kumquat there uh -huh. because it's an evergreen. Right. And the citrus goes in my mouth, not usually in my pool. Exactly. <laughs> what trees are invasive that they probably would not want to put next to their pool? Yeah, so ash trees, mulberry trees, um, and, and this is a pool or a wall or house. you know, or your house. Put those out in the yard. Put those out in the yard. Yeah, anything with uh, big monster root systems. Pecan would be another one. You know, the big nut trees I wouldn't put close. But yeah. you know, the, the citrus and the deciduous fruit and your tropicals, they, you know, their their roots aren't invasive. So so a peach, a plum, a citrus. Yeah. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Or a papaya. Yeah. You're or probably papaya. fine. Yeah. Yeah. The next piece of this question is, do you ever worry about them? Uh, being so close together, you know, because you put trees so close together out here. I have some farther apart and some close together. Yeah. So tell me about that. Well, the ones that I have far apart, I am growing for shade trees. Mm -hmm. I want them to have a area to themselves right. where they can get huge, like my mulberry or like my carob or like my neem, my moringas. They have a big area to grow in. Right. But a lot of the trees, like papayas, mm -hmm. bananas, my figs, my star fruit, my um, my guavas. Guavas, I was gonna say guavas. They're yes. closer together because we have an abundance of sun mm -hmm. in Phoenix. Oh, that is that is the case. And so it's very difficult to shade out trees in Phoenix. Yeah, we have so much sun. Right. So I find that I can get away with it as long as my soil is very healthy. Yeah. I'm amending with compost, rock dust, minerals. Yeah. I put mycorrhiza when I plant a new tree. What is mycorrhiza? It's the beneficial fungus. Mm -hmm. And it's the beneficial fungus that's a living, you know, civilization of, of, of mycelium right. in the ground that bonds with the tree's roots, yeah. creates a symbiotic relationship that helps the trees share moisture, information, nice. nutrients, all that stuff. Yeah. So it's one of the components of healthy soil. Right. And if you have a lot of that, I put a couple scoops of mycorrhiza that I get from jakemace.com. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> in my tree hole when I right. a new tree. Wow. And when the compost is in there, the worm castings are in there, mm -hmm. the rock dust is in there, and the mycorrhiza, the trees can be closer together. Now for people that are concerned about a wall, uh -huh. planting close to a wall, I think that walls can be very beneficial mm -hmm. for fruit trees because when the fruit tree is young and it's newly planted, yeah. the wall can protect it against wind, Right. against too much sun, um, and it could be uh, kind of a mother to mm -hmm. the baby tree. Yep. And then once the tree grows bigger than the wall, it will shade the wall. As long as you're about a foot or two away from the wall where the mature trunk won't push it over, yeah. usually you're okay. No good. So good question, cool. very common question. Yeah. Thanks for Shannon for uh, Th saying thanks that. Thanks Shannon, yeah. Patricia wants to know what's the best plants to be planting in Arizona right now? Right now, what's the date today, November the... 10th? 10th. November Something 10th. like that? Yeah. Election day was two days ago? Yeah. Right? Right now, your winter greens. Oh, yes. Literally, when you leave here right now, I'm going to be planting garlic, potatoes, any kind of leafy green, mm -hmm. like bok choy, spinach, and lettuce, and also my sugar snap peas. Got it. They're all going in right now. People that planted them a month ago um, are finding that they're already bolting because it's been the 90s. It's been too hot. Yep. I found that with stuff in our garden. So it's not in gardening, it's not always the early bird gets the worm. Yeah. It's proper timing. Right. And what I usually think is when it's in the low 80s in Phoenix, it's time mm -hmm. to plant that winter garden full of garlic, onions, potatoes. Um, you can plant your leafy greens, any kind of leafy green. Snow peas. And your snow peas. Sugar snap pea and snow pea, either the bush variety or the climbing variety, 
my favorite thing because it's like my snack of the garden. Yeah. I love it so much. Yeah, because they're sweet. And how about as far as fruit trees grow, can they plant fruit trees right now? No, you don't want to plant fruit trees Why now. is that? Um, well, this is a big old long story, but the best time, I'll just I'll tell you, the best time to plant your deciduous trees is in January, hmm. and best time to plant citrus uh, and tropicals is in end of February into March. Why do you think that is? Is it because of the winter? You don't want to put a new tree in the ground and exactly. then it gets frozen? Exactly. So usually when you transplant a tree, uh, it'll go into some kind of shock. Hmm. So if you're transplanting something now, it's going to get cold in the next 45 days. It could yeah. freeze in the next 45 days. Sure. And if, so if you transplant something, it goes into shock and it freezes, you could kill it. Yeah. That so. tree needs to grow out yes. to protect itself. Yeah. Right? Exactly. If you guys loved these videos, if you like the question answer segment, if you love the video content, we give them to you for free. So please, instead of paying us, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and yeah. share this video with all your friends. Yeah. It helps us get the word out about urban gardening. And, uh, and I'm urban really- farming. Urban farming. Urban farming. Urban farming. Thanks for being at my home today. Hey, thanks. And for the great video. Yeah, absolutely. Farm out.